So Chelsea, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? First, I'm a mom. Um, second, I work at the hospital. I work at the hospital on the reserve called Kanawage. And I also own um, a prop shop company. So it's called Lundi's Prop Shop, where we rent out a whole bunch of party props. Uh, and I also co-own with my friend a juicing company called Go Juice. Uh, and I recently started modeling on the side as well. So quite busy. <laughs> Uh, everyone you know goes through different things that um, test them and almost break them but when you're a mom you kind of have those two minutes to shut the door cry yell get it out and then you know you got to get it back together and you got to get it together and put on a happy face for your 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 child so at the end of the day you know your emotions are there but you kind of have to thug it out for for your baby having the loss of three of like your really, really close and best friends, you know, a couple of months apart in one year, I think kind of obviously would change anybody. Um, it's something that you, you know, it's obviously not even imaginable or believable now, um, but it made my relationship with so many people so much closer. Um, you know, everyone I love, we kind of try to tell each other that we love them all the time, constantly, you know, try and better our relationships because, you know, it's just, it, it's a lot. And just kind of reliving those situations over and over. And every time the phone rings or your friend texts you like, oh my God, call me ASAP. You know, you kind of just have in the back of your mind, like, oh my God, who died now? Or what happened now? So I think that kind of change, changes you in the sense where you're always expecting something really bad to happen again because, you know, three of your worst nightmares have already happened. So I think that, yeah, that's a lot. It's kind of hard to even have those tough moments a lot of the times um, just because you're always so kind of you know, like caught up in your life and your daily routine and, you know, being a mom that, you know, my son is turning seven and he kind of lived through these nightmares with me, you know, like the three people that had passed away were really close to him as well. So I think that me sitting there and crying in front of him every day is kind of hurting him more. So it's just like, Again, like I said, you have those few minutes where you just kind of go in the bathroom, cry it out, and then you're like, okay, get it together. Like, okay. Or you cry in your car, and then by the time you get home, you wipe your tears, and you're just like, all right. Like, time's up. Get it together. Put your happy face on and, you know, like, be there and strong for the people around you. So I think, yeah, dealing with it is kind of easier said than done in some aspects, but yeah. Honestly, really, really, really telling the people, like it sounds so cliche, but telling the people that you love and that you appreciate that you really do love and appreciate them, you know, as much as you can, because it literally could be day by day that you aren't able to tell these people those things anymore. So, it sounds so like, you know, cliche, but I think that is like the biggest thing for me that I really took away from that. Like, it's very serious. So, yeah. My mom is kind of that like strong woman. Um, and even, you know, her best friends and stuff like that, my aunts, they all were those kind of strong women that kind of held shit down. So, um, yeah, I think it was really from that. And it was really like, we always had the best of everything, had the best childhood, had the best memories. Um, so I think that's really like where I got it from, where it's like, at the end of the day, like, you know, you need to hold shit down for your kid and show them what it is to be strong and what it is to respect people and love people and whatever else. So I think from them, my mom and my aunts and stuff like that, it's definitely, definitely from that, 100%. You know, for me, I it's just things that follow me every day and 
I feel like there's never gonna, and it, it just kind of, it like, it suddenly just kind of hits you and like everyone says it. And again, it's so cliche, but it's just like, you're doing the dishes and you're just like, wait, what? Like, no, this person's like gone. That's so weird. Or you're like just walking outside or, you know, coming here and being so excited that you would, you know, I would call my best friend and I'd be like, girl, guess what I'm doing or guess where I'm going. She'd be like, no way. Like, you know, just little things like that. And it just kind of hits you or, you know, my son's birthday is coming around and they're not going to be there. So it's like things like that. And it's just like, well, like those are the times that it hits you. Like my seven year old son wears my best friend's keychain of her face on his bag, you know, so it's like his school bag. So it's just like little things like that when he's like, oh, can I put this on my school bag? And I'm just like, okay. Like that's when it hits you and it's like, holy, like, you know, like this is real shit. Like this is not like, this is not a movie or it's not something you hear or it's not like, you know, a sad story. Like it's really your life. So I definitely think that's when it happens. I worked at a property management company. I was there for a little over a year and a bit. Uh, I was loving it. It was a lot of hard work, but it was, you know, super cool. I was out and about. Um, but I'm kind of somewhat happy that I did get fired when I did because it kind of pushed me to kind of do things that were more me um, and things that would allow me to hopefully one day be successful for me on my own, you know, to work my ass off every day and wake up early for me. Um, otherwise I think I would have did that forever or did something forever where it's like, you know, I'm busting my ass for someone else other than, you know, what I want to do and what I could eventually pass down to my son. So that was really hard at the time, but I think now it definitely was a blessing in disguise for sure. It kind of makes you think like, okay, well, well for me, like, okay, I can get, I can put so much work in and, you know, like be answering emails at like 10 PM and doing this and not being able to drop off or pick up my son and, you know, whatever. And literally they could just be like, sorry, pandemic, bye. And then I'm like, okay, so now what? So now it's like, you know, I can create multiple sources of income that I have control over. And like, depending on how hard I work and what I put into it, is what I'm gonna get back. And hopefully one day, you know, that will be my main source of income. And, you know, I can drop off my son every day, pick him up and do all these things that, you know, owning a successful business gives you the flexibility to do most of the time. So definitely, definitely happy for that. I think when, you know, you're starting it from like the ground up and starting it where you're like, your back is kind of against the wall I think that's kind of when you see it and, you know, you do the numbers at the end of the year and you're like, damn, like I made that. Like, you know, even if it's not millions of dollars, you're just, you know, you're proud of yourself and you, you kind of tap yourself on the back and you're like, oh shit, that's amazing. Like keep going in next year, imagine what you're going to make, you know, like, and it's just like, I just have like so many plans and so many things that I want to do that my mind is always racing. Like I'm always going to my son's dad, okay, like let's buy this, let's buy this, let's buy this, let's buy this. Like this is going to be the best thing ever. Cause I'm just always like, you know, my mind is always racing. So I think that's when you kind of have to put the fire under your ass and you're like, okay, let's go, let's be the best. I feel good. I feel that um, good things are coming and I feel like I have so many strong, important angels in the sky and so many amazing friends and family that it kind of has no choice but to keep getting better because, you know, over the past year, like, we've been through the mud. So it's like, now it's time for the rainbows and sunshine and butterflies because I feel like we all really, really need and deserve it now. So praying for, for good, hoping and manifesting good and waiting for it to come because it, it it's for sure coming. So, yeah. I think that we all kind of just need to remember that everyone is going through something, that everyone is fighting their own demons and their own battles and, you know, so many different things that you have no idea about that we should all kind of just give each other a break and be nice and just help one another out instead of trying to take each other down because it's a really sad world we live in and 
people have been going through so much everywhere you look that just being a nice person could really change so many people's lives.